When I was young, I remember we used to go to the Trocadero, which was in central London. It was like at the, I think it was at the bottom. No, it was at the top of um, like the centre in Piccadilly, the Trocadero Centre. And I remember going up there, like going to Planet Hollywood when that was there, and going um, up there and playing like a, what was it called? I, uh, air hockey? Is it air hockey? Where you've got a little puck thing and you try and do it. And everybody would try and do games. I was pretty terrible at everything. On a Sunday, uh, my gran used to go on a coach trip to um, Fleetwood Pier. She used to play bingo uh, in Fleetwood. And I always used to go with her. And uh, I must have been about 10, 11, something like that, around about that time. And um, I used to go with her. And she used to, the bingo hall was located at the far end of the pier. And then after the bingo hall was a massive arcade. And um, she used to give me like a little ice cream, used to get ice cream tubs. And uh, she used to just put loads of 10 P's in there for me. Because they were 10 P back in the day. Um, and I, I used to just go and do my own thing in the arcade. And if I needed any more 10 P's, I'd go back to my gran and she'd give me more 10 P's. I went to arcades when I was young when I could find them. There weren't many dedicated arcades, but you'd find them in places like fun fairs and seaside resorts. And yeah, I went to them as often as I could. If I was on a maybe a cross-channel ferry, I would seek out the, maybe the two arcade games they have. I absolutely loved them. In terms of fond memories of the arcades, I specifically remember a corner shop at the top of my road. So it was like a sweet shop, confectionery, whatever you want to call it. So there was a corner shop at the top of my road and it had one arcade cabinet. That arcade cabinet was Street Fighter 2. Wow, we had never seen anything like that before and we were just blown away by it. The only problem was that back in those days you put one arcade cabinet in one shop, in one area, and what happens? everyone flocks to it and you ended up with with tons of kids from the area all going and there used to be queues in the shop this is just a normal sweet shop and they stick a street fighter 2 arcade cabinet in it and straight away they've got queues of kids it was ridiculous well arcade machines is an interesting one because i've not not really come across many uh here in doncaster so it's never been something where I thought to myself, yeah, I'm going to go out and go to the arcades. I've always stayed at home and played the games on consoles instead. I've more recently had a chance to, to try some, especially at places like Play Expo, which, um, in particular, uh, playing Paperboy. As I had it on the Commodore 64, and it's just, it's just really nostalgic. Still plays great. It's still infuriating. Uh, but... Great game. I went to arcades quite a lot. Any arcade I could go to, I would go in there and spend what little money I had. Um, the one that I remember most specifically was uh, in the Agora. Uh, it was kind of a shopping precinct, but we crossed with a sports hall, if you like. It, I think they've knocked it down, or they're in the process of knocking it down now, but there was like a, a indoor market it got used for but initially it was used for roller skating and just off the side of it there was a um, amusement arcade and I, I would go there like two three times a week it was where I did most of my gaming I fondly um, remember one not an actual arcade place you go to but an arcade machine and that's the Nintendo Play Choice 10 a system which has 10 games on it and they're interchangeable games that the establishment who owns the machine could uh, pick between Nintendo, NES's fantastic catalogue. I never went to the arcades uh, when I was uh, younger. Um, the, the thing is, where I am, where, I, where I'm living, there aren't any. Um, the only arcade that I could say was an arcade was in the bowling alley, where you had like Sega Rally, um, The Simpsons and Daytona. Uh, USA or perhaps Killer Instinct when that came out. That was, oh, that was amazing. We had loads of different shops and shop fronts that had arcades tucked away. We had an arcade in a video shop, upstairs video hits it was called in South Arrow. Uh, we used to go there a lot and uh, that was the first time I ever played Golden Axes was, was there. Uh, and uh, I think I played the Simpsons arcade there for the first time and possibly Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles there. Certainly Splatterhouse. It was the first time I saw Splatterhouse was there. Um, 
And Robocop, I think, as well, they had. Occasionally, we used to travel to the nearest city from my hometown, which was Bedford. And um, we used to go to the Mega Bowl. But really, the Mega Bowl was an excuse for me to play, or at least me going to the Mega Bowl was an excuse for me to play uh, the Simpsons arcade machine in there. Which I loved. I, I mean, I really, really, really loved playing that game. Homer, always. Um, well, I say always, but sometimes Bart. Um, yeah, just loved it. I only ever got to the third stage playing the arcade, but back then, when I was young, it was uh, that that was a good mean feat, I thought. But I just remember it was really, really nice to kind of like hang out there. But then sometimes it got a bit shady and it got a bit dangerous a couple of times. So we decided not to go there again because it just, I don't know, it seemed like a seedy lot by hanging around at one point. So we decided to do something else. I remember there was a pub in Muswell Hill called the... John Baird, Muswell Hills where I grew up, and that pub had um, a Nintendo Play Choice 10 in it. And we used to go there sometimes for a, you know, a meal, a pub lunch with my mum and my mum's friend and her son. And myself and my friend, we'd jump on the Nintendo Play Choice 10 and we'd play games like Contra, Super Mario Brothers 2, we'd play Double Dragon, we play NES Tennis, NES Golf, a pound, you put a pound in, and rather than it being credits, you'd actually have a timer. So you could play as many games as you want in your allotted time. Around my way, every chip shop, every chippy, uh, it used to have an arcade machine in, and my local swimming baths had a couple of arcade machines. And I used to be in the swimming baths all the time because they're two arcade machines which I used to go and play. Uh, one was Yi Ah Kung Fu, and the other one was Wonder Boy. And I can't swim, but I went in the swimming baths uh, probably more than anybody else in my class just to play these um, video games. And then, of course, Space Invaders happened. And it got really good. And uh, hooked. And then, of course, they got Star Wars. So, I mean, my, my favourite memories of there are mostly actually watching Star Wars. They had to the sit down cabinet and, and just standing there. People would crowd around it. If someone was playing Star Wars, there would be a crowd around it and people would be impressed or not at the playing skills of the person playing. The Trocadero in particular was amazing. I mean, I used to go down there on weekends with my friends and... We, we used to just be blown away by everything that was going on there. Massive Sega rally cabinet and um, things like... I remember going there and seeing Mortal Kombat for the first time and just being like, whoa, that's amazing. In the arcade, it was just phenomenal to see that. And, and to see some guy standing there doing a fatality in the arcade. <laughs> Kano wins. It was, was um, a really, really strong memory for me. So... Arcades bring back a lot of nostalgia for me and things like going to going to piers and going to seafronts and playing in the arcades. Whenever I go back to a seafront now um, with my family, I always end up sort of ushering them into the arcade, you know, just, just to get that little bit of nostalgia back. And they're never quite as good as they were, but it's always nice and when you're by the sea it's quite a nice thing to sort of relive. Me and my buddy went on a normal cinema outing and decided to go for a couple of drinks at the nearby bowling alley beforehand and we found that they had a crap load of arcade machines. We had, uh, there was Pac-Man, there was Mario Kart DX, I've never seen anywhere. Mario Kart Arcade Grand Prix Deluxe. Uh, I was, I was stunned at that and various, various other uh, arcade machines with games that I'd never heard of. But in terms of going to a real arcade, I always sort of consider them as sort of like the retro ones, which you see, like, hundreds of them in America, especially when you watch other YouTubers um, in the community. They seem to have an arcade on nearly every street corner, or they did at least, where you could go in and play, like, Donkey Kong or Miss Pac-Man or Pac-Man and uh, so on and so forth. And that, that would be a real arcade. One of my favourite memories, though, comes from Glasgow itself, my beautiful home city. 
It was at a chain department store, Debenhams, and on the top floor, for some reason, had a massive arcade, and it was good. I mean, good. But the best part, Super Street Fighter 2, beautiful sit-down cabinet. Just massive screen. It was lovely. It's possibly one of my favourite gaming memories. I just spent hours in there while my parents went off and did whatever parents do when they finally got rid of their children and found somewhere vaguely appropriate to leave them, which, if you think about it now, is not an appropriate place to leave children uh, whatsoever. So really, there's some things to address there outside of this video. When we were about 16, 17, Mark and I, Mark of the Game Shed fame, formed or solidified our friendship in an arcade on London's famous Oxford Street. There was a little arcade on that road and we used to skip our A-levels and go down to Oxford Street and uh, play just one game, mainly, which was House of the Dead 2. We must have pumped hundreds of pounds into that machine and we got very, very good at it. Um, we were there weekday, weekend, whenever, whatever time of day, it didn't matter. We'd skip school, we'd go in there and we would perfect that game. An absolute gem still to this day. That's the thing about this place that sticks in my memory a lot, is the sound. Um, around 83-ish, early 80s, before you even got to the mid 80s, the sound in there was incredible, just with all the whizzes and zaps and stuff. The noises of early arcade games. And Astro Blaster had a sound all of its own because it had, when you fired, or when you hit something rather, the boom had an incredible bass tone to it and you could hear it through all the other sounds. You know, there was lots of treble in, in the noises that these things made. And they'd all be competing at the upper ends of the audio spectrum register, whatever. But you could hear the boom from Astro Blaster and that always sticks with me. We were living above a shop at the time and the, and the shop like three or four, do, four doors down, there was a general store. A uh, Sri Lankan fellow owned it and he had a cowl in that came over and he would put, he had, the, he had the arcades on wheels and he would wheel them out every morning and have them outside the shop. Right, all covered up with tarp. Uh, three or four sometimes and he had Operation Wolf, Operation Thunderbolt and obviously he'd change them over every so often. Black Tiger, Shinobi, Shadow Dancer, um, R-Type 1 and 2 at one point. So many different strange games we've never seen before. He must have been getting them from, from abroad. And uh, spent many times being late for school at that place indeed, yes. So arcades are quite important to me and um, I wish I had one now. I really do. 